If you're in high school right now, this is definitely a video that's going to help you attain potentially your goals in the future. So basically, you're, you've probably searched how to run a business in high school. I have experience doing this and it's kind of built my entire life. So I thought I would share it also with you. So basically how I first started, and this is actually a potential idea for yourself, is when I was in grade 10, I started teaching basketball, getting paid at the YMCA. Now this was a paid job. This was not running my own business at that time. And I was volunteering there to teach younger kids basketball in the basketball classes since I was around grade six. So I kind of built up through the ranks. When I became age, I applied for a job there and I got the job. However, this is one way that you could actually start your own business and that is working a job that you can actually just kind of siphon off from into your own business. And what I mean by that is this. Basically, I was teaching 30 kids a week. It was a actually it was 60 kids a week. There was two programs, 30 and 30. And basically, there was a few parents who basically came up to me and said, hey, I like the way you teach the kids. I like how you're teaching my kid. Can you, after this program, at, in about an hour, can we come back after lunch and be able to train with you for an hour and I'll pay you some money? How much would you want to pay, be paid? And after the program, it was open gym. Anyone could go in there. And I said, well, you know what? just pay me what I'm getting paid here, a little bit more. So I was getting paid there at the time $10 an hour, which is illegal these days, but back then it was the going wage for somebody who was a student, minimum wage. And I basically said, you know what, pay me 15 bucks, which is magically today's minimum wage, and I'll, I'll train your kid. And I was getting 15 bucks on top of my my three hours worked and uh, it was fantastic and then another player a parent came up and said hey I like how you teach my kid I know you're training this other kid how would you like me to pay you 15 bucks just like you pay the other uh, the other kid pays you and we'll go after him and I was like you know what that's fantastic why don't we do this so now I'm getting earned income and that's an extra 30 bucks a week at that point for a few weeks when another parent came up and said, hey, I know I'm keeping you around for way, way after your shifts here, and I know you're training those other kids, how would you like me to pay you 20 bucks to pay my kid? I really like how you're teaching the kids. And so I started training their kid at 20 bucks, and then those other two parents found out that he was paying me 20 bucks, and they felt bad, so they started paying me 20 bucks. And at the end of the day, I was working three hours for 10 bucks an hour at the YMCA. And then after that, I was working another four hours for 20 bucks an hour, my own business. I'm getting all of it. And I just have to pay taxes at the end of the year if I even have to pay taxes at all. So I was getting my 30 bucks. And I eventually turned that 30 bucks into an extra 80 on top, which is fantastic. And this is one way that you could actually build your own business. If you play sports, get a job teaching a big program and then don't go up to each individual parent because that will get you fired. But if you have the parent come to you and say, hey, I like how you teach. Can you train my kid? That's when you start saying yes. And then you just charge a little bit more and then you'll be able to run your own business. That's one way. Most of us, as high school students, are playing some kind of sport. It's either going to be football, soccer, whatever. It doesn't matter. Basketball, in my, in my case. And you could literally do this. And then you can kind of build off of that, too. So now, I charge $50 an hour to train. That's the starting point, depending on how far I need to go and travel to you. However, I started at $20 bucks an hour, and it all came from working a job. So always look to be able to kind of build your business because when you are running your own business, you can charge more money than of course what you would make working a regular job. Running a business also gives you tax write-offs. What is a tax write-off? Well, of course, that's your cell phone bill. That is literally anything that you use for your business. 
So for example, you can write off maybe your car, obviously not the whole thing, but whatever mileage that you use for business. Calculate the car mileage, and at the end of the year you can use that towards your business write-offs. Also things like insurance costs, gasoline, oh just everything. Like you wash your car, you buy soap for your car, you can write that off. Why do you think business owners have a really nice car? It makes them look more respectable, but also they're probably gonna be paying a lot for car washes. Guess what? Those car washes are a write-off. Do you need a computer even? Guess what? Computers are a write-off too. You obviously need to do taxes with a computer. You obviously need to be maybe doing some social media posts with your computer. Guess what? That's how you do it. You write everything off. Anything that you use for your business, you write it off. Why are write-offs so important? Well, I'm gonna give you an example. My first year running my business in high school, I did $4,000. My write-offs that year were actually around 5,200, according to my note, which means that I made a negative 1,500. Well, that's not really a negative because, let's face it, I'm investing in my business for one, but also, I would have been probably spending that much money on gas anyways, or on a car anyways, or on a cell phone anyways, or on a computer anyways. So guess what? Even though that's technically a write-off, I'm using it for business, it would have been probably spent anyways. Which shows to the government that you have a negative $1,500 in your earnings, and that means that you pay less taxes and you get more money back from the government. Now keep in mind that you cannot write off clothing or things that are basically stuff that would be not used for business anyways, but you can technically still write off clothing. This is why most of my clothing that I have is either given to me for free from uh, basketball tournaments and things, or clothing that I've made myself that has my logos plastered pretty much all over them. And why is that? Well, guess what? I'm advertising my business on my shirt, which means that I can write it off. That's how you can write off clothing. Because if you're advertising your business, guess what? It's a write-off. If you put a sticker on your car that says Basketball Coach Allen, that's a write-off. Yeah, well, it wouldn't be for you because my name's Basketball Coach Allen, but you get the point. But what are some businesses that you could start? Well, obviously, there's the grass cutting businesses. That is an obvious, well, you could even, something. somebody who came to my door the other day wanted to shovel the snow. And, of course, mine was already shoveled, but the neighbor, uh, his wasn't, but the neighbor wasn't home. So that guy was essentially just knocked on his door for about five minutes for no reason however until I went out there and said yo just so you know he's not there but when we're really looking at it that is the most obvious thing that you could run and that really has no overhead you could literally just go to your neighbors and say hey my I got a lawnmower want me to cut your lawn and like 30 bucks 20 bucks whatever it is and you can literally make money that way another business idea is what I've already mentioned is training that could be literally any sport, and you could then even get into more specialized training in the future. Future, This has higher growth potential in the future than grass cutting. You could legit be a YouTuber. Now, I was actually called a bad influence the other day because I was giving motivation to a, somebody who was in high school who wanted to be a YouTuber, and the parents didn't like me saying that they could be a YouTuber, so obviously you're going to get a wide range of people who have different opinions on YouTube. Literally, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're starting at the age of like 13, 14 on YouTube and you actually do it full time on like besides school, like you do it for like 10, 15, 20 hours a week, I'm going to tell you right now, if you're doing a good job, you're making good thumbnails, you're making clickable headlines, you're making a video that people actually want to watch most of the way through, I'm going to tell you right now, you're probably going to do quite well and you could probably pay for college with that revenue. Now, I'm not saying that everyone's going to be lucky like that. It's not luck. It comes down to how much effort and knowledge that you can gain on that subject. So, for example, if like I've seen so many kids who start YouTube and they give up, and 
It's just because they didn't have a catchy headline, they didn't have a good thumbnail, and if you don't have a catchy headline and you don't have a good thumbnail, nobody's going to click on it, and that's all what YouTube cares about. And the third thing they care about is if your content is terrible, people are not going to be watching through it. If they're only watching 10 per the first 10% and they're dropping off and not watching anymore, that's telling YouTube people don't like your video. So make it so that it's a good quality with good audio and you can kind of build from there then you're going to be quite lucky top five videos clickbait videos do really well and I don't mean bad clickbait I mean like top five basketball plays of all time top five basketball moves from Steph Curry things like that guess what those do usually quite well but you really have to put in a lot of work to be a youtuber that takes a lot of work this is actually much easier than this but there are so many options out there. These are just three examples of things that I've done in the past. I'm gonna give you another example. When I was in college, I scrapped. Yes, and I don't mean, I probably spelt that wrong, but I don't mean fighting, I mean metal. So when I was in college, one of the ways that I paid for college wasn't getting a loan. I had money saved up and invested from when I was cutting the grass in my grandmother's house, when I was in, when I was basketball training players, I was working at the Y. I had that money saved up already, and I had about three quarters of my college tuition that I was going to spend already in my account. However, I needed to get the last quarter, and I didn't want to take a loan. I disagree with taking loans from co for a college degree that... I'm going to say right now probably 50% of you will never ever use in your life and when it comes down to it I disagree with taking a loan for that so I decided to not take a loan myself and what I did was I scrapped I had a 2001 Mercury Cougar and a, before that was a 1996 1993 93 I think Civic not no six was too early 1993 Civic SI Coupe and uh it was a fun car, but those two vehicles, I went from the Civic to the uh, Mercury, but um, with those two vehicles, I was able to go around and pick up scrap metal on scrap days, collect it in my parents' garage. At the end of the two-week period, I would take it into the scrapyard at Posner's. I'd get a couple of hundred bucks, and I would literally just have that invested until I needed it, and that is how I was able to pay for college. And scrapping metal, it's risky, right? You are, you obviously you could get tetanus, which I never did, thank God. But you could go into the scrapyard and pop your tire, there goes $200. And that, there goes like a week's worth of scrapping. But that never happened to me. And I did get a pop tire once, but I was able to fix it with just like a poking thing. I'm pretty good with my hands when it comes to cars. I also have friends who are mechanics and those are the people who deal with my cars now because I just don't want to deal with cars. Don't get me wrong, I love cars, I've got a, I've got a 2016 Mustang, it's out there, it's, it, I just don't want to deal with the mechanics of it. I got other people for that. So how can you start a business? That is the big deal of the day. And of course, one way is of course just building from an existing business, which means basically offering something similar to what the business already does. The YMCA never did one-on-one -on -one basketball training, so I offered that to those who asked. They would not be able to fire me for that because they didn't offer that. However, if you were working at, let's say, Best Buy, and you started offering online virus removals, guess what? They would fire you in a second because they already offer that. If you can work for a business and think of an idea that can be an extension of that business, and you offer that yourself, that they don't offer then you should be totally fine obviously I am not an employment lawyer and jobs and companies may just fire you for that but just keep that to yourself and you should be fine I let my managers know what I was doing because honesty being open with your employer is great hey this is my idea this is how people people are coming up to me asking to do this are you okay with me training players one-on-one -on -one? And if the answer is yes, then you can do it. If they say no, then you just don't do it or you find a way of trying to figure out how to do it later on. But I was open with my employers with what I did. And then if you can, even if you can't do that, if you can't find things to do like that, well, guess what? There are so many things. If you're good with computers, you could literally say, I'm going to 
train players locally who play Gran Turismo or people who play NBA 2K. You know what? I'm fantastic with NBA 2K. I can teach you. If you can then do that, that is a fantastic way. Think of an issue that people are having and fix it. I know that may seem really, really hard to do, but once you are finding issues yourself, then you can kind of fix it. I'm going to tell you right now, there's nobody in this area right now where I live who do video game training, yet in China, it's a massive business. So guess what? Whatever happens in China eventually happens here. You can start your first video game training business. I hope that this video has kind of given you ideas on how to start a business. It's really not that hard. Be a sole proprietor. You don't need to build a big corporation. Be a sole proprietor and build from there. So basically how I started was of course training. That later turned into YouTube. Meanwhile I was also investing. And then YouTube turned into me selling PDFs on my basketball channel, which then brings me a good revenue. And then of course, I now have some businesses who pay me to post other stuff, their stuff on YouTube. I have some real estate agents. I also have some car dealerships who pay me to post their videos and create videos for them to be able to post on their own social media. I also offer consultations to businesses as well. Because I've built a YouTube channel to almost 70,000 subscribers, other businesses want to be able to do that as well. And basically, if you can do the YouTube thing and build it to a substantial amount, you could have a side hustle business on top of your business that then offers consultations where you could charge anywhere from a thousand to ten thousand dollars just to go out there for a couple of hours and say this is what you need to do and this is where you need to go with your online presence literally it's the easiest work that you could possibly do but you need to build a social media stream that's big enough to be able to say hey look i've done it and so can you and I cannot stress this enough, investing is massive. You need to invest a lot of your money because guess what, if this business dries up, like for example recently this part of my business dried up because of COVID, this was able to cover what I was losing there. But guess what, YouTube was able to cover what I was losing there, PDFs were able to lose what I was covering there, posting other company stuff was able to cover that because this blew up and then consultations blew up for me as well. So if you, when you are building your business, obviously you need to start small. You're not gonna be able to do everything at once. But if you can build something that is one layer of income and you can start thinking of secondary levels and those secondary third, fourth levels of income that you're bringing in, if they can be diverse so that it can withstand either a recession, a massive market fluctuation, a, uh, a virus even, then you should be able to withstand life. You need to have multiple incomes anyways. You can't just rely on one job because as we see, the government can take that away. So by building your own business, if that is something that you really want to do, I hope that this video has helped you. If it has, hit that like button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys again next time.